Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Max with Buzz Talks here, and I'm back with a preview for Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 6. This episode is called Death is the Enemy, and I think that this is a really well-suited title because this episode is focusing in on the White Walkers, and White Walkers from the human point of view represents death. And Beric Dondarrion says it best in the preview, death is the enemy, the first enemy and the last, the enemy always wins, and we still need to fight him. And I think that this is really funny coming from Beric Dondarrion, and I think he's telling this to Jon Snow because both characters have actually defeated death. And I think that brings forward a lot of questions regarding the White Walkers. It's pretty clear that death is the enemy, but do the White Walkers represent death? I understand that they resurrect the dead, but wouldn't that be making them living again? Whites are just the Night King's version of the Red God's resurrections. Jon and Beric Dondarrion are both fire whites technically. Beric Dondarrion and Jon Snow could technically both be considered fire whites. They were resurrected from the fire god. So then what are whites considered? They're resurrected, but in the form of ice. So I think it's debatable if the White Walkers actually represent death. They are bringing death to humankind as we know it, but we may learn something more about the White Walkers that may let us believe that they are more than just a weapon of mass destruction. And we have seen many hints to suggest this. How they travel in packs of four when they're under attack. How they send one singular White Walker to take one of Craster's babies. The articles of clothing they wear, they support an emblem that looks like an arrowhead. They seem to have rituals. When they convert Craster's baby, he is put in the middle of a pyre surrounded by 12 spikes. And they push these symbols that strongly represent their past, the children of the forest. So I hope that this episode pushes forward the idea that White Walkers are a lot more than just weapons. And I think the best way to introduce that into the story is either through Bran or through Jon. We've seen a lot of footage from the trailers and one shot suggests that Jon is alone. He's at the rock pyre where he was fending off the whites earlier with his team, but now he stands alone as a lone wolf, taking out one white at a time. An interesting thing about this shot is that there are a lot of onlooking whites watching Jon. And I think that pushes the connection forward even more. Both Whites and John are both resurrected. They've both been dead and brought back. And I think the reason the Whites aren't attacking speaks volumes to who John is. They may not be attacking because the Night King is controlling them. He wants to see John. He wants to get John alone. Maybe communicate something of interest. Or maybe the Whites aren't attacking because John is more than just a human. He's been dead. He's been brought back like the Whites. He's both fire and ice like the Night King is a human embodied in ice with the center of Dragonglass. He's internally fire because of the Dragonglass in his heart. Jon was stabbed in the heart and brought back. And externally, he's a Stark, which is ice. And internally, he's fire, Targaryen. And I think the connections between Jon and the Night King are insane. To the point where I would say that Jon is the human embodiment of the Night King. And that's where everything could come full circle. Jon's story arc is perspective. He brings people together. He brought the Wildlings and the Night's Watch together. He's always the one to understand two sides of a situation. And what better time to introduce this opportunity of understanding the White Walker's perspective, the Night King's perspective. And then Beric Dondarrion's terms become even more clear. You cannot defeat them, you can only fight them. But I think Jon's gonna find another way. And instead of being defeated by death, they will sign an agreement with death, the Night King. And that will ensure safety in the realm. So I think that's an interesting story arc that they can drop in this episode. And make us realize that Jon is a lot more than just somebody fighting the Night King. He is there to bring, again, two sides together, which has been his whole story arc. But we move on to the action sequence, and what can we expect to see? And to be honest, a lot of the pieces are jumbled, and I don't know how to fit it together in a proper sequence. We see the group traveling through all of the ice and the glaciers. And I believe this is the moment where we're going to get a lot of character moments. We're going to see all of the characters interact. A couple of scenes that I'm pegging is we're going to see Beric Dondarrion and Jon talk about death and the Red God. Well, we get a snippet of that in the preview. Another scene that I guarantee we're going to get is Jon offering his sword Longclaw back to Jorah. I feel like it's a plot point that makes a lot of sense. Jon seems like the honorable guy to want to return the sword to House Mormont, but it also makes sense that Jorah would refuse and give it back to Jon. But then it's a matter of what sequence comes next. We see the group preparing to fight, surrounded by snow. And what I find interesting about this is that it was announced in the first episode of this season that the Night King brings the storm. We get a long shot of clear skies and the Night King is bringing the storm. And I think this can represent that the Night King is very close. I also want to point out 
that in that same sequence we got confirmation that there are giants that are whites. And I think that hints at a bigger picture, that there are a lot more things that can be resurrected than just humans. We've seen undead horses, we've seen undead humans, undead giants, and now I think it's the next step. We're going to be seeing undead spiders, undead polar bears, undead wolves, and hopefully undead direwolves. I would personally love to see an undead summer. For those of you who don't remember, that is Bran's direwolf who was killed. And I think it would be the perfect symbolism that summer is now dead, but it's been brought back in the form of winter. But then we see the hound look at the mountain that's shaped like an arrowhead. And since he's the one that's seen the vision, I think he's going to be the one that lead the group in the right direction to go. But naturally we know on the way they're going to face a lot of challenges. First of all is the storm I was talking about. The group form a circle. And then also they faced a huge conflict with one of the white walkers and a lot of whites. They see a horde coming towards them. And this only seems natural that it's a horde of whites. You cannot fight them so they have to run. And I think this is the only opportunity they could potentially capture a white. And then we see the whole group fight and I think eventually they will have to run. And when they're running they will find this rock. And this is where they will form potentially maybe a circle and they will hold off and defend the rock and now that they're abandoned on the rock there are a couple questions I don't know like they should be overrun by white so what are they going to put in place to prevent the white walkers from overrunning them we know that Daenerys is going to arrive with her dragons because we see fire in front of Jon so we know that Daenerys comes in swoops in and saves everybody and rescues everybody but Jon is left standing couple of questions is, I don't know how they're going to bring Daenerys into the fold. She's in Dragonstone. How could she fly all the way to Eastwatch and find them in time? It could be Regal. I would love to see an opportunity of Jon's connection with dragons, proving even more that he is a Targaryen. We've seen him pet Drogon last episode. And now I think it's time to see Jon summon a dragon like Daenerys did Drogon in Season 5. Because Regal would leave, that would force Daenerys to leave. But this is a part of the story where I think it can get tricky. Because I hope they find a way to introduce Daenerys into Eastwatch without it seeming rushed and total fan fiction. But there are certain aspects of the fight that I hope that we see, but I'm not sure that we will. I would love Bran to have a strong presence north of the wall to help aid Jon and the others. I feel like Bran's really taking a back seat, and I feel like he could be really helpful in this situation. And in the show, we've seen little tidbits about Jon's past. Gilly telling Sam that Rhaegar got remarried to another woman. And I think we're laying down the groundwork for Jon being full-blown Targaryen, and I think now would be the perfect opportunity to introduce it to everybody before Bran or Sam confirms it later in the season or in the next season. So I've really been pushing for Jon summoning a dragon. I hope that we get it. And I hope that this episode proves not to be simple writing and it to move the plot forward in a really significant way. But overall, I think we're going to spend about half the episode north of the Wall. Daenerys has to come in and start saving these people, and we know the Night King gets off of his horse, so it'll be interesting to see if he can use any of his abilities. We know that he can shift the ice. We know that he can resurrect the dead. I think it would be a great opportunity to show him green seeing, possibly. I believe that he's always connected to the Weirwood Tree. That's why he's been able to see Bran when he is in visions. It's because the Night King is always connected. And I would love to see an interaction between the Night King and Jon Snow. And I believe we will get that because after Jon is standing on that rock, he seems to be fending for himself while everyone else is gone. And then we see Jon running away on a horse. So hopefully Benjen makes an appearance. It would make sense because he can't come south of the wall. So he will be north of the wall and I feel like he will be a heavy presence in this show. And I believe that Benjen will save Jon. But I'm not sure how. But I hope Jon gets to have some sort of connection with the Night King and the Whites. Since he is both dead and a Song of Ice and Fire. But moving outside of this, we see Daenerys and Tyrion in Dragonstone. So I'm sure we're going to get some setup between them as characters before Daenerys goes north. I'm sure they're going to be talking strategy about Dragonstone, how they're going to hold, how they're going to carry themselves, and how they're going to move forward if they capture this white, which seems like an impossible mission. Another interesting scene that we get from the trailer is Tyrion looking concerned as he sees three dragons fly by. And I believe that this is going to be the shot when Daenerys leaves for Eastwatch. But again, I hope that they handle this appropriately. I don't want Daenerys just going to Eastwatch because of a raven or because of something really stupid. Like, it has to be a significant reason. And the travel time there is also huge. If she were to fly there, I don't know, would it take a day maybe? I'm not sure. I could be wrong. But I hope they find a way to make it make sense. Because in this shot, I always had a theory that Rhaegal would be the one to force Daenerys to go to Eastwatch. But in this shot, we clearly see Drogon leading the pack. So I hope... 
that my theory comes true, but it does put doubt in my mind looking at this shot from the trailer. But then we see Winterfell in the preview, and we see Arya ask if Sansa is scared, and asks what she is scared of. So I believe we're seeing some conflict between the Stark children, and we will see how much information we get of this moving forward. How effective is Littlefinger's plan to pit the Starks against each other? Because Arya seems really annoyed with Sansa because it seems clear that she doesn't have Jon's best interests. Like she is doing a really good job running Winterfell, but she does have that secret agenda of planning that Jon is going to die, and I think that that really pisses Arya off. And I think it's a really cool idea to find out that Sansa would be manipulating Arya and Littlefinger the whole time. Maybe to finally find out that Littlefinger is guilty of certain things. But I believe as soon as Arya brings this letter to Sansa, she would explain it and that's that. I feel like there's no true reason to be mad at Sansa for her past in writing this letter to Rob. So I hope they go past their issues, but another person in Winterfell is Bran, and I hope that he has an integral role in this episode. He was over the wall last episode, and I think it makes sense for him to return this episode. He needs to speak to Jon, and Jon is so important, so I think he should be north of the wall with Jon. He should warg into a crow, stay with them, be their eyes, be support for them. I think that would be awesome, and I would love to see a vision. I don't want to learn about Rhaegar being remarried from Gilly's mouth. I want to see it happen. I want to see Rhaegar and Lyanna Stark meet at the tourney of Harrenhal. I want to see all of these plot points in a flashback, and we haven't had one since season 6, and I'm getting worried we won't see one again. I think it would be great to see flashbacks of Jon's past while Jon is at Eastwatch fighting the White Walkers. But that is what I hope will happen in this episode based on all the trailers and previews that we got. Please let me know if you agree with me, disagree with me, what you think in the comment section down below. We have our breakdown video coming soon and I will be live on Saturday at 8.30pm Eastern. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.